Hello, everybody, and welcome to Mars Hill Church of Christ Online. We are so happy that you are here with us this evening. Uh, as last week, we have our good friend uh, Matt Burgess with us. Hello, Matt. Merry Christmas. Hello, everybody out there. Merry Christmas. Uh, we are doing this Bible study via Zoom this week because uh, Janice and I have the crud. Uh, we pretty sure it's COVID, but not not a hundred percent sure. But we're just self quarantining right now, and uh, we both lost taste and smell, and has the, have the congestion and all that good stuff. And so we're just kind of trying to stay away from folks, so we can't uh, infect anybody for Christmas. But uh, we're doing good, and uh, hope that this format works well for you, Matt. So this is me reaching out and giving Chris a hug since uh -huh. I can't do that. This is. Him. This is me accepting. Hey, and I just had a thought in the future. If anybody else wanted to join a Zoom call, we could just send the, the invitation out and we could have several, you know, join in the Bible study. Uh, Absolutely. If that's something uh, anybody would want to do, let us know, and that'd be something that we would be glad to do. Um, but uh, we will begin with our prayer list, as we always do. Of course, uh, we're thinking about Margaret Marks and the Sparkmans, Miss Betty and Ed. Uh, the Roberts, uh, we good news that Miss Gail will be starting some stem cell research or stem cell treatments on uh, January the 4th, and we're hoping that that goes well with her. Quinnia Ragster still at rehab, um, and we're hoping that that does her good. We're still praying for Edith Broadfoot and David Underwood Sr. They did get David moved to Huntsville, and he seems to be doing okay there. Uh, Chuck Barrett and also Betty uh, tested positive for COVID. I hadn't heard if Jones come back positive or not, but we're praying for them. Uh, Richard Taylor is at home recuperating with uh, his sons and Hubert there helping take care of them. Uh, June Smith's recovering from eye surgery. And we are uh, especially mindful of uh, uh, Jane Scott uh, in these moments in the passing of Van. Van's going to be very missed. Um, I was talking to Jane yesterday, and Van was one of those uh, silent servants. I mean, he just he just did things and what needed to be done. He didn't really need any recognition or a pat on the back, but he just uh, he he did uh, what was expected of him, and even more. And we're going to miss uh, Van very much. Tim Malden, uh, this is the son-in-law of Philip and Debbie May, of course, uh, was airlifted to Pensacola Baptist Medical Center. Uh, to undergo some advanced COVID treatment. Had a few setbacks this past week, and we do want to remember uh, them in your prayers. Uh, I believe I heard that Keith Davis, uh, many of you know him, his wife uh, passed away this past week. Uh, she had been battling cancer for some time, and we do want to remember uh, him. Uh, Janice Cox, this is the daughter-in-law of Otis and Dot Cox. Uh, very sick in ICU there in South Carolina. Um, I guess she has some kind of unknown uh, lung illness, and so we want to remember uh, her as well. Um, continue to pray for our elders as they uh, are monitoring this COVID situation very closely. Uh, we uh, do pray that um, relief comes soon uh, for folks, um, especially those who are frontline battling uh, this pandemic. Uh, we just we can't fathom what those families are going through, but we do pray for those. And remember, Sunday morning at 9.30, uh, we'll have our regular drive-up worship service. Matt uh, will be preaching this Sunday as per our regular fourth Sunday uh, for him, and we're looking forward to hearing him speak. Uh, and remember, if you can't make it uh, on uh, to, to the church building, we'll have our online uh, streaming, good Lord willing, uh, at 9.30. So, Matt, uh, would you offer a word of prayer, and we'll get started with a class. All right, let's, let's pray together. God, as we uh, come before you uh, today, we are grateful for the blessings that we do have. We're also mindful um, for those that are, are sick and not able to be with, with family and, and loved ones, many affected uh, by COVID-19. We pray for them, pray for a speedy recovery, uh, especially for those that are more at risk. <laughs> Um, other uh, health problems that they have, and that you will be with them um, and, and help them heal them. 
uh, God, we pray an end to this pandemic very soon um, and quickly. And again, healing across our nation uh, with, with many different problems that we do have. God, we pray for uh, Miss Jane and that you will be with her and, and the Scott family. Um, we pray for that uh, you will comfort uh, them in uh, only ways uh, that you can and be with all those, especially this holiday season that are going through um, this, this time uh, without loved ones, maybe even that they had last year at this time, uh, but that you will be with them, uh, help us to reach out and comfort them and give them encouragement. As we study uh, tonight, help our, our minds to be focused and to think about ways that we can help and encourage others and give gifts um, uh, that can uh, help uh, to benefit and bring glory to you. Pray a blessing on the Moran family that you will give them a healing quickly and that they can be back with us soon. And I thank you for the means we have uh, to study together even, even today as we are, are looking at these gifts that we can extend to others. Uh, if any that are undergoing treatment, we pray, pray a blessing on them and also God, a, a blessing on our, our eldership, our leadership. Be with them as they make decisions to grow, help our congregation grow closer to you, but keep us uh, safe and healthy. We pray all these things through Christ's name and amen. Thank you, Matt. Uh, last week, we began talking about gifts, uh, especially this time of year, gift giving and thanking and receiving. And um, we talked about uh, some gifts that we can give that doesn't cost us a thing, things that are, are probably more valuable than anything money can buy. And we're going to kind of continue that study uh, this week. Man, have you all got all your Christmas shopping done? Yes. Um probably the, the best that we've ever done. And I've spent the past uh, several days um, doing some present wrapping, um, had some little helpers, um, little elves around the house uh, to help with that. And so uh, we've done lots of gift wrapping uh, and baby Paul has not eaten any, um, any paper. So that's a, that's a good thing. That's good. Have you already got hours? Uh, hours that we're sharing our present. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to try to mute when I cough so I won't blow anybody away. Well, that'll be, that, that'll be uh, you know, quick trigger finger um, there. But uh, as, as we get started uh, tonight, again, uh, this is gifts that don't cost a thing. And uh, I, it's right up my alley. Um, I like to um, uh, pinch a penny. Um, I can squeeze it all out. So gifts that don't cost a thing, uh, that seems something very very good for me. Uh, last week, uh, we talked about a couple of things, the gift of uh, concession, and that was just being able to admit when you're wrong. Uh, a good listener, uh, Chris, talked about how listening is so much more um, than just actually listening, but uh, the nonverbal and being a good communicator. Uh, and then also a, a, to be happy, a joyful um, disposition or just the way that you act. And uh, to kind of go along with that, Mine for today is talking about uh, our interaction with others, and it's uh, the gift of affection. Uh, and when a lot of people think of affection, they think of maybe a, a book like this uh, that is used in marriage counseling sessions um, all over. Uh, and I know Chris has used this and studied this, um, and it's The Five Love Languages, uh, and that's by Gary Chapman and the five love languages are different for everybody, but everybody has a primary language in which they speak or they communicate love. And just the overview of the book is it's quality time that you want to spend and you kind of rank these one to five. So just kind of think about these, how you show affection um, and how you want people to show you affection, quality time spent. And this is Ideally, in this book, it's dealing with spouses, but it's really with, with, with any relationship with your, with your kids, with people you work with, anyone. Quality time, words of affirmation. You're doing a good job. Chris, you're doing a great job, by the way. Mm -hmm. you, but, uh, words of affirmation. Gifts, very uh, opportunistic this time of year. Acts of service, okay, cleaning out gutters, things like that. And then physical touch, uh, giving someone a hug. And so... That's kind of where people's mindset goes. Uh, another book, uh, His Needs, Her Needs. Uh, there's the title there, uh, used in marriage counseling. But that's not exactly the, um, the route that I want to take today in talking about um, affection. But uh, Chris, is that probably what most people would think of when you're talking about giving affection to others? 
Yeah, and and I think it's I think it's important to to say there's different levels of affection. Um, I'm not going to give Matt the same affection that I give my wife or my children. Um, and, and it's just like we talked about love, I think, a little bit last week. I'm, I, I don't love you like I love my wife um, or I don't love my children like I love my wife. There's different levels of affection. But uh, we, we do know that, uh, especially in marriage couples, uh, 1 Corinthians 7, you know, Paul reminds us to um, give each other the affection that, that we're due. And, and so what that tells me in my mind is that we need affection. We, we need someone to care. We need someone to reach out. We, we need someone or just to know that someone is thinking about us, appreciates us. We, we kind of need that. Uh, and and the, the, the research I've done on this and, and stuff that I've read, I mean, you can be the most recluse person in the world and, and say you don't want, don't need relationships, but there's something innate within all of us that, that desires to, to, to be wanted, to be a part of something bigger than we are. Um, and affection is a huge, huge aspect of, of belongings because, I mean, if you don't feel that, if you don't feel that between you and um, in the relationship, then it's, it's not going to end well. Absolutely. Um, that, that need, that want to be appreciated. or <coughs> and, I mean, you look at two institutions that God created. Uh, when he created Adam and Eve, he created them to be together. And then the family unit that he created from that. And then going along with that, the church, the whole point of that community. And you see that in Acts chapter 2 when the church began. But uh, two examples I want to look at. Uh, one from the Old Testament, if you want to open up um, in your Bibles, in First Samuel chapter 18, this is um, like classic vacation Bible school lesson about friendship. Um, when you look at, at First Samuel uh, chapter 18, you're looking at the story of Jonathan and David. And in First Samuel chapter 18, it's the first three verses there. It says, as soon as he had finished speaking to Saul, the soul of Jonathan, so like his, his very inside, his spirit, the soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David. Jonathan loved him as his own soul. And when you look at that word um, knit, there's different translations of that, but it just means that they were, they were bound together um, in friendship. Uh, and you can go on and, and look through, throughout the rest of the narrative there of David and Jonathan and how they, they really were, and it, how it just destroyed Jonathan for, uh, for David and his father Saul to be at, at ends with each other. Uh, and, and, you know, it really disgusts me how some people will take a text like that and, and condone homosexuality or say that David and Jonathan had some uh, weird relationship. But it's exactly what you just said, Matt. They were just so close to one another that they were just knit at the soul. It was like they were, they I mean you can't get any closer to somebody than that. I mean, in a physical relationship, of course, but um, don't, if you're, if you're not familiar with this story, if you're, if you didn't grow up in the church and you happen to be watching this, this is not condoning homosexuality. This is not uh, one of those loopholes that people say is in scripture. I mean, this was a very um, righteous kind of relationship that David and Jonathan had. It was absolutely, it was a, a brotherly love in the yeah. sense that they were as tight um, as brothers. The, the same the same word there where it says that their souls were so close, that was used in Genesis chapter 44. And the context of Genesis chapter 44 is, if you remember, Joseph was in Egypt and he had predicted the famine and they had all the food, all the grain in Egypt. Um, and then Joseph's brothers, who remember, had beat him up, sold him into slavery, told Jacob, their father, that he was dead. Um, all the brothers came, and and Benjamin, if you remember, uh, they were, Joseph was going to keep Benjamin, and the brothers were like, they stood up for Benjamin, how they should have stood up for Joseph, but they said, there, there's no way you can't keep him. In Genesis 44, verse 30, it says, Joseph's um, brothers, it's talking about how they, they can't go back to Jacob without Benjamin, and the, the word that's used there, it says, their father's life was tied to Benjamin. And, and it carries with it the sense that if something were to happen to Benjamin, there's no way uh, that Jacob would be able to survive that because their, their, 
their very lives, their souls were knit together. Um, and, and I know, you know, with, with having children, Chris, this is just, that's something that, that's just part of you and you, you are a, a part of them and they're a part of you because our lives are so entwined and, and that's what it's talking about. So when we're talking about affection, yes, I, I think spouses, that's an, an obvious instant, but it's with people that you inter interact with. And um, one, of, one of my assignments uh, this semester in the class that I'm taking, and Chris is also in school as well, and he's, he's done a lot more research than I have about this, but um, I just did some, some research at school and did a little research uh, online talking about how middle schoolers and their sense of belonging and how when they feel like they're appreciated and welcomed in a class that they feel encouraged and they do better. And it's the same way in a family unit. And we should be like that as a congregation. And I think Mars Hill does an awesome job at that. I think we make our visitors feel very welcome, whether they're in the parking lot or in the building. And so um, affection comes in a lot of different ways. So Chris, what's some ways that, that we can reach out and show affection, like just in a you know, down to earth sense um, to, to the people we interact with? One of the easiest things that I think you can do is just smile, just I mean, I know you're not always happy or you don't always want to smile, but I mean, we've got so, and I'm not disregarding folks that are going through tough times. You know, we all go through tough times, but there's always probably going to be somebody that's going through a tougher time than you are. Um, and just smile. It's the, the simplest thing that you can do to just show effect and just, you know, kind of that um, engaging, accepting kind of smile. Uh, you can, you know, say, hey, how are you doing today? You know, people, it's the easiest thing we can do. Just say hi. Just pat somebody on the back. I know with with my children, uh, with with Liam especially, I, I don't, I can't pick anybody else up right now, but <laughs> with Liam especially, he just, he just loves to be held and um, he, he loves to be snuggled and, and like, and I love that because it's not going to be like that long he's already kind of not wanting to do that as much as he used to and so it's just simple things um a card or just a uh, if you're at school if you're at a school setting and there's someone who's constantly sitting by their self in the library at the lunch table whatever just go go sit by them and just talk to them and say hey you know it could be somebody that you've known for years it could be a new student you know just little 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 bitty acts god you know god is has designed us so that you know, the greatest leaps in Christianity are taken by the smallest acts. We, we don't have to, we don't have to be a preacher. We don't have to have an ability to stand in front of a crowd. We don't have to have all scriptural knowledge to affect people's lives. It's, it's with the simple stuff. And I believe that's the way that God intended it. I mean, it doesn't take a lot of effort to smile or to wave or to say hi or or just to check on somebody, just to let them know you're thinking about them. I don't know how many times growing up I heard the saying, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Um, and that's what affection is. Affection is, is a fondness. And you've all visited congregations um, and been in places where you're like, wow, I just feel so welcomed. And maybe the other end of the spectrum, um, you've, you've been to uh, maybe not churches necessarily, but you've been in a setting where, where you just thought, I, I did not feel welcome there. Um, and that fondness isn't there. And our goal as, um, as Christians is, is to make people have that feeling of fondness. Well, it, <laughs> we might want to put a, 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 a flag of warning here. Um, if, if we're in a congregational setting, um, we don't want to be too too nice that we come across as pushy or invasive right. or you know people you know people still have their bubbles <laughs> they still have their bubbles and we had to respect that so uh, i mean it's it's a common sense thing you know just be kind and, and be sincere and genuine don't be you know overbearing or you know you know smothering them or you know it's just it's just a be genuine like we are so glad that you're here you know just just make a connection and it's uh it's it has a little bit to do with the cultural thing as well when you when you look throughout the new testament um there is a sense of, of physical touch that pervades all through when you look at at jesus uh, jesus when he's there teaching on the hillside in, in mark chapter 10 verse 16 
Um, he I, gives was, I was just thinking of that. Of that. So, so he's Jesus, obviously. So Jesus can do whatever that he wants. But all of these children, he's, he's trying to keep the children close because remember it's, it's that they are the ones that will inherit, you know, the kingdom of heaven, be like the little children, he says, but he places his hands on them and he gives a, a blessing to them. When you continue throughout the New Testament, he has a close physical relationship with his disciples. Um, and then when you look uh, after Jesus ascends to heaven and the church begins, how is it that the apostles give the gift of the Holy Spirit? What do they do? They lay their hands on people. And um, all through, it's, it's five or six different times. Romans 16, 16 is an example. It says, greet each other with a holy kiss. Um, and that was a a kiss of peace. Uh, later, it was called um, in church history, a sign of peace. Um, and it was uh, through hugs. It's kind of, I guess you could shut like a secret handshake almost like what kids would do now. But it's just a, it's a way to show affection. That was their culture. And some people, you know, my wife, Whitney, she, she's a hugger. Um, if she's never hugged you, it's, it's coming. Okay. You know, you just, you just wait for it. But some people are like that and some people aren't. But just because you're not a hugger doesn't mean that you can't find ways to show affection because um, that's something that, again, it reaffirms to people and it makes people have that sense of, of fondness. And so um, there's different ways of doing that, um, but figure out what works for you and figure out what works for others. You know, interesting enough, in, in some of the studies I've done about the New Testament culture and, and the way that the community viewed the church um, they were so affectionate uh, within the church that those on the outside accused them of doing bad things like because they were happy to see one another they were hugging one another they were you know the cultural kiss uh, to one another they were shaking one another's hands they were joyful to be around one another they they wanted to gather with one another and those on the outside that didn't really understand that they just assumed that this is, it was just this big um, immoral gathering of people who just, but that's not at all what it was about. It was just, it was about having like precious faith. It was about having the same goals, the same intentions, the same heart, the same motivation, the same Jesus, the same Lord, the same God, the same dream of, of, of eternity. And, and that's what drove their affection is, is because they were on the same page. They were heading in the same direction and, and they needed that encouragement um, more so then probably than, than we've ever experienced today. You know, they were, they, they had people killing Christians and fighting against Christianity and, and threatening Christians. And, and they were still gathering and, and just think of, just think of a, uh, a situation where you're not supposed to be a Christian and then you gather with Christians. Oh, you just, you want to hug them and, and just, mm -hmm. and I'm so happy that you are here. I'm so happy that you're still fighting with me. Um, and that's what drove the affection. It was that like-mindedness of Christ. And just like you said, as, as Jesus, you know, picked those children up in his arms and laid hands on them. Uh, I could just figuratively and, and, and literally um, but I think that's one one thing I miss too mad about being able to gather in a normal yeah. atmosphere at church is just the hugs and, and, and the smiles. Uh, it, it makes your preaching, or it does me anyway, it makes preaching differently because I kind of, I, I, I get fuel from faces. Yeah. Like there's this. an energy, there's an energy there. That yeah, and, and that's all, that's all part of that uniqueness of being bonded in, in a certain way it's uh, it, it changes when you don't you don't have or feel that it is this holiday season a gift that won't cost you anything uh the gift of affection yeah. chris what you have gift? um i went with the gift of a good deed um it it costs absolutely nothing to do something good for other people now we're not talking about uh, some huge, you know, I mean, if you want to buy me a car, that's great. I mean, but that's not what I'm talking about. Um, I'm talking about small things. We talked about it just a few minutes ago about how the smallest things make the biggest difference. You think about a prayer. Um, prayer is, I mean, it's effortless. You could sit in your recliner 
and just think of somebody to pray for, that's doing something good for someone else. And I want to go ahead and say this before I forget it, Matt. Um, there's a lot of older folks that I talk to, and perhaps you do too, who, who feel like they can't do anything for anybody anymore. They can't um, they can't work like they used to be able to, like they were they, that they were once able to. They they can't um, um, visit like they they once were able to, and they just feel like they're useless in the church. And and I try to remind them, just your encouragement and your presence is a good work. Um, Miss Martha Hill, um, I hope hope she can watch this. But I told Jackie not too long ago that. Martha is doing a good work simply for for being there at worship because you know she doesn't feel good. She would rather not get up and get dressed and get ready. And and part of that may be some of, of Jackie's pride, but you know she's there. And I and I tell her, I mean, it it, it encourages my heart uh, to see you there. And so if you are an older person um, and you feel like you're useless in the church, then then please get that out of your head because. Just, just your your wisdom and your encouragement and your presence and and your comments. I mean, that is a good work. That is that is helping folks like like me and like Matt. I mean, that that's what drives us is your encouragement and and, and never forget that the simplest things. Um, and we have so much of that at Marcel. It's so great to have yeah. great examples of that, um, of of so much wisdom and experience and and letting us know because a card after a lesson um, or even a Bible class, several of you uh, mentioned that you enjoyed this format with us kind of tag teaming this last week and, uh, and hope to hear more good comments from that. So, uh, yeah. but there's, there's so much you can do with good deeds. Well, then, you know, the, the golden deed, I, and I think it's interesting that uh, you have businesses and entities that will use the golden deed as their motto, and, but really have no clue <laughs> What, what it means. Oh, yeah. um, it, but we know what it means. You know, you, you do unto others as you would have them do unto you. My dad used to say, uh, do unto others before they do unto you. <laughs> and, and he said that that's the golden need of the world, do unto others before they do unto you. But I, I, one of those texts that I like to go to, Matt, when we're talking about doing good, uh, is in Galatians chapter 6. And it really starts. Um, in a verse number six, I guess, five. I mean, you could read the whole, the whole chapter, but we'll start there in verse number uh, three. Well, let's start in verse number two. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Um, for if anyone thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But they let each one examine his own work and then he will have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another, for each one shall bear his own load. Let him who is taught the word to share in all good things with him who teaches. Do not be deceived. The good is not mocked, for whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption, but he who sows to the Spirit, to the Spirit reap everlasting life. Now verse 9 is, 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 is the key here. Let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially those of the household of faith. Uh, as we have opportunity. Now, this doesn't mean that you have to have a lot of money to, to do good. It doesn't mean you have to have a lot of resources to do good. Um, Paul says, as you have the opportunity, do good to all. Uh, if you see uh, uh, um, something that you can do for someone else, uh, by all means do it. Uh, if it's, you know, if, if you go to their house and there's trash in their driveway, you pick it up and, you know, put it in a bag, put it in your car, put it in your pocket. Uh, that's, that's doing good. I, uh, Matt, you may not want me to brag on you, but last, was it last Sunday we were both leaving the church building together and you know, I thought Matt was wanting to race me. Uh, but he put on his brakes and put on his flashers, and I'm like, "Well, what is he doing?" He was he was picking up trash from from the road, and he threw it in the back of his truck, and he took it home, and I, I, I assume he threw it away. But uh, I mean, that that was just a, a prime example of doing something good. I mean, 
What about you, Matt? What are some ideas that you might have? Well, I, I love how there in, in verse 10, it says, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone. And I mean, church, we, you know, you can find an opportunity every single day. Um, a, a, a minute of free time as you're driving down the road, just thinking of someone. And I know it warms your heart when someone just lets you know, I was thinking of you the other day and uh, I, I, I prayed for you and I hope you felt that. Um, I hope you know that others are thinking for you. And, you know, Marcel, we're such a loving place, so encouraging, cards all the time. Um, and, and that's a great example. Um, and, and teaching others, uh, teaching your children or grandchildren or, um, you know, others, how to do that, how to do this, but it's an attitude. Absolutely. It is. Um, every opportunity you have, uh, there are those that, that live around, uh, the church and around the area. And they, as they go walking, they pick up trash and people see that. And that Chris said, that was, that's a, a great example. But in the pandemic world that we live in right now, these golden deeds, you know, sometimes they look, uh, a, a little bit different, but it's the opportunity. And that's the, I always think about, uh, that's the example of the good Samaritan, uh, you know, the priest and, and the Levi, they, they walked by, they saw the opportunity, but they passed on the other side of the road. Um, I mean, they, they literally had to go out of their way, uh, not to help, uh, the person who had been, uh, who had been beaten up, but the good Samaritan, the one that would have had the most reason not to help someone of, of Jewish culture, uh, uh, the good Samaritan took that opportunity. So it's, it's having your eyes open and looking for those opportunity and, and opportunities. And they may come in a variety of different ways, especially over the holiday seasons, but uh, just having those, those ears open and, and an open heart, um, not quick to judge others, um, to say, well, well why, why do they need help? What have they done to put themselves in this position? Uh, because uh, sometimes there's not answers for those, but uh, opening that heart just like Jesus did. He didn't ask too many questions uh, when he was ministering to others, when he was healing others um, and, and asking them, well, why are you sick or what have you done to deserve this? Um, he just healed them and, and ministered to them. Yeah, didn't ask any questions, just did it. Um, You talk about in, in the pandemic world in which we're living now, those good works, I mean, what do they look like, Matt? A phone call, a note, um, a, a, a letter? Ab absolutely. And uh, I was uh, talking to uh, David Underwood Jr. Uh, last week or the week before, and he was talking about being able to see David Sr., um, you know, with porch visits and things like that. And that's something <laughs> for them to stay um, for that, um, and just continue to remember that family in your prayers and, and David Sr. as he's uh, kind of quarantining away. But uh, there's all different things. And you've seen that, you know, those of you that keep up with social media, you've seen opportunities um, for that um, to, uh, to go and to do porch visits or, or window visits or, or things like that. Uh, but uh, it, it is so encouraging. One of the most encouraging things for me, Chris, is uh, just when people come out on Sunday morning and to be able to worship together. And then Chris and I, if, if you don't know a little bit of behind the scenes, one day we need to record us trying to, to put all that together. But um, Chris starts kind of the production um, as, as I go and, and kind of oversee the, the Lord's Supper and do the devotional there. And then I come and, and tag in for Chris when he goes and, and does his lesson. And then I kind of man the computer system. This is all something that Michael used to take care of so easily. Um, and he was such a blessing. Um, but we kind of tag team that. And when you sit down, Chris, and you see that those people watching at home, that, that number watching on YouTube, that's so encouraging to know that if you can't be there, that, that you're there and that you're worshiping with us. Or, or when you drop us a, a note or a text message that says, hey, we you know, appreciate that lesson or but there's all different kinds of things and it is kind of a, a, a digital age or digital world that we live in. And so there's a lot of opportunities for that um, in, in ways to reach out uh, either email or text message, just to let you know, just to let people know that you're thinking um, about them. But so I guess really, Chris, the two things we talked about, the two gifts tonight kind of go hand in hand uh, because good deeds help to show that affection. Yeah. 
Um, and if we're not, I don't want to sound condescending or um, too preachy, but if, if we're, good deeds are something that we should want to do. It's something that uh, we do because we love the Lord. Um, but it's what we were created to do. Um, Ephesians 2.10 says we were created in Christ Jesus for good works. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, uh, you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing to whom you have learned them. And he says, all scripture, verse 16, has been given by inspiration to God. It's profitable for doctrine, proof, direction, for instruction, righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for what, Matt? For and good works. Good yeah. work. And so, and, 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 and we would be amiss if we didn't mention the reason. Not only were we created to do good works, um, but the reason, and, and Matthew 5, 16 tells us the reason that we do good works. And it's so that others can glorify God. It's not about look what I did or or um, look what I can do, but it's it's about look what God has allowed me to do through Him. And a good example of that, Matt, um, I know a man, and you know a man who has a smoker who loves to smoke meat. Um, he's kind of disabled, can't do much anything. Um, but what he can do, he does. Last night we received a, I received a text that said, uh, check your mailbox. And so I went down to check the mailbox, and there was a slab of smoked bologna. Uh, oh, it, it was, oh, I, I can't smell it or taste it. And I was so mad. <laughs> I was so upset. But, it'll, keep. Uh, it, it'll keep. It's in the refrigerator. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. But, you know, he, he and she, they do what they can do. And that's, um, I just, I appreciate God for their heart for that. I mean, and that's, that's what it's about. It's, it's not about getting credit. It's not about, and, and like you said several times already, there's several, several, several people, several of you at Mars Hill, uh, that do things, um, without, um, wanting the credit or, uh, the pat on the back. And, and uh, I can just tell you, and whatever your jewels are in, yeah. In her, whatever our gifts are, whatever ministries are. Uh, those ministries overlap with other people's needs. Um, and that's oh, part of that is, is fitting that together. So those, those good needs, like the fostering faith closet that we have, um, you know, those needs are out there. There are families that are fostering that uh, need clothes and help with that. And that's, you know, one of the ministries we have. So it's kind of getting those two things matched up. Yeah. Well, Matt, um, any, any closing remarks before we sign off for this lesson? They don't cost a thing. Gifts that don't cost a thing. I didn't know if, if you had fro the internet's sketchy, so I didn't know if you'd froze up or you, <laughs> you were thinking. Um, I know. We appreciate your patience um, with us tonight. We love the technological world, but sometimes it's not our not our best friends. Um, oh, it, always, if there's anything, you know, I wish we could read minds and I wish we could um, predict the future. But if there's anything that you're struggling with, anything that you need physically, spiritually, um, Matt, or not, Matt or I may not be able to you know, fulfill that need, but we know a lot of people. Uh, we have resources and good people who would love to reach out and help, uh, not just because it's Christmas time, uh, but because we love you and um, we, we want to fulfill our purpose of, of being able to show God's goodness through the things that we can do. So if there's any need, uh, spe especially spiritually, um, don't don't hesitate to call one of us, call one of the elders, call somebody and talk to them about your struggles. Uh, we'd be glad to talk with you, sit down and pray with you, pray for you. Um, nothing better that you can do for yourself than to get, you know, in a, in a better relationship with, with the Lord. Um, well, Matt, if you don't have anything else, I'll uh, end in a prayer. To God, we love you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity that we have to, to share your love. And I pray, God, that as we see the opportunity to do good, that we will do that good, Lord, if it's in, in our ability to do. I pray that we'll never see a brother or sister hurting and, and we, we don't at least try to fulfill those needs, God. Help us to uh, be the people that you want us to be so that others can see how good you really are.
We thank you for the opportunity to be like Jesus, to live like Jesus, and we pray, God, that we will take those opportunities seriously. We continue to pray for our sick, Lord. We uh, just know that you have the gift of health and healing. I pray for extra measures of that. Uh, God, I pray that you will be with our elders, that you will uh, give them uh, wisdom and discernment. God, I just pray that you'll be with us as we um, celebrate this holiday season with our families. I uh, just pray that it's a happy time of, of gathering. Uh, but for those that it's not a happy time, God, I pray that you will comfort their hearts and give them peace as well. We thank you for Jesus, and we thank you for his appearance on this earth to show us, Lord, how to get to you in heaven. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Have a good rest of the week. Hope to see you Sunday.